Hello FossTube! My name's Natalia, this is Official Mermaid's Cove, this is my channel where I share my cross-stitching hobby. Um, this video today is going to be a FossTube extra. Um, I had put some questions out there in my last update about what might be some things that would be good to show you. Um, and um, some of you mentioned wanting to see some of the fabrics, the hand-dyed fabrics that I have. Um, I'm going to start with the ones that I've actually purchased. Um, I know a lot of people were interested in seeing the ones that I've dyed, but I was... I started... <laughs> we'll see how this video ends up, okay? Bear with me. Have some patience. I'm going to go through the hand dyed fabric first, and then I'm actually going to dive into the other fabric that I have in my stash. Um, I don't know how long this is going to go. There's a lot. There's a lot more than I thought there was, and... If I ever make a comment on this channel again about eating fabric, feel free to tell me that I do not. <laughs> um, but the fabric that I bought that's hand dyed is actually less than what I have dyed. So I just wanted to go through that real quick. And you know, who doesn't like seeing some pretty fabrics? So this is a piece of fabric that I am, I guess I could, well, I don't, I could insert a picture because I can do that now. Um, I'm stitching, um, I think it's Cottage Garden Sampling Summertime series. It's the rooster. I'm stitching it on this fabric. This fabric is a, I don't know how to say that. Fuile Morte. It's a 36 count uh, linen. It's a stitch me fabric. It's very pretty. And I wanted it because I wanted, you know, it's a rooster. So I was thinking like rooster at dawn. This is the other side. You can open it up. And I think the rooster is just going to fit on this. So I'll still have the other half of the fabric. If I want to do cottage garden sampling size chart. But this is so pretty! Look at all those colors! I love the Stitch Me fabric. Um, I actually went and got to see her brick and mortar store, which is where I picked this up, um, in Illinois. And uh, maybe one of these days I'll get back there. Um, I think I have, I might actually have another piece of her fabric. I'm not mistaken. Yes, this is also the Stitch Me fabric. This is Evergreen. It's a 28 count Lugana. I have a 18 by 27 inch piece. This one I'm planning on stitching my... Uh, this one. I'm actually going to film the other Mirabilia's and Lavender and Lace charts after this, but this is uh, Queen Bee. By Mirabilia. So I want to stitch her on like, you know, garden. Think about her being on a garden type fabric. Um, I love the modeling she has on her fabrics. I think this is the, it has to be either low water immersion or she ice dyed this. And I say that because just the stuff that I've done. I don't know, I could be wrong about that, but based on my experience, the only way I've been able to get similar to that effect was by doing those techniques. Um, okay, there is another piece of fabric in here. It is not one that I bought. It's one that I dyed. I'm doing... I'm just going to do my Zelda on it. And it is... Prepare your eyes. Because it's bold. This is a 14 count Ada. It is pink, pink, pink. I think the pillows that she's laying on, or leaning on, will show up nicely on that. And will highlight the pinks in her dress. It's got some more, you know, a little fading of the color at the edges. But for the most part, it's pretty good solid pink. <laughs> and this one, I just jar dyed it. I need to link one of the videos I've watched on it. You could just look up jar dyed fabric, um, cross stitch fabric, and you'd probably pull it up. Okay, we'll go through. Excuse the zipping and unzipping. Okay, this one's actually. We'll pull that up to the side. Um, I can show you these. These I found at a thrift store, so I didn't buy a full price for them. 
I guess it would have been 22 bucks. I think I got them. Um, some of these I got like the coupons I didn't pay anything for them. This is Crystal Da Vinci by Picture This Plus. And does it say 14 count Ada? It's opalescent. <gasps> Look at that. Oh my gosh, this is so sparkly. And it's such a big piece. Like it's big enough to do a really big memorabilia, or I could walk it. Probably do two. It's so pretty. Or mermaids. All the mermaids that I have. But it's got these really nice. I don't know if you're really getting it. Mm, do I have? Oh, there's some white. Can you kind of see that better? Did that help at all? I'm doubting. It did. Let me. Oh, here's some white. But you see, there's like some purples. There's like some mauve. Would that be the color? It's like a brownish, lavenderish color. There's a lot of different colors playing on this fabric. It looks so pretty. So this picture, this plus Da Vinci, fourteen count. There's going to be a lot of rustling in this video. So apologies for that. This is another Da Vinci. This does not look like it's 14 count. This might be 18. Uh, is it 14? It might be. No, it might be 14 count. This one is not opalescent. It's got some of that. Ooh, this one's actually got some nice like reddish purple. I don't know if that white fabric is helping with the color balance at all. But this one looks really pretty too. That's the other side. I might be able to do, um, I recently bought Raven Queen. I might be able to do it on that. Looks like it'd be a good backdrop. Okay, this is another picture of this plus. It is called Valor. It is the fortune count, Ida. It's like a greenish model fabric. Ooh, it's so soft. This one seems softer than the other ones I just pulled up. There's not really like too much color play in this. It is just mostly like, like a evergreen, horse, light green mold over the fabric. Looks really nice. I probably stitched some of the lavender and lace patterns I have on this. I might, I might have to think about it. Mm, let's see. And then I have, this is the last one. I believe. I might pop in a picture. I also did um, one of, a Marabilia on a picture of this plus Eek opalescent fabric. It's 14 count. It's really pretty. But this one, okay, so this fabric is Crystal Jazz. So it's an opa opalescent. It's a 16 count Ada. And it's got like these really nice light blues and some purple here. Very pretty. Thinking of all the mermaids I have that would go great on some opalescent fabric. Get the glittering of the ocean. This is not meant to be a threads video, but why not? These were in the package when I got this at the thrift store. So somebody whoever donated it had a bunch of crescent color and I've bejeweled. It's pretty cool. Since it's in there. I might do, I don't know, I'd have to pull out a lot of my hand dyed threads because I usually only buy them if I need them for particular projects. I might not do a video on that. I might just show them one whenever I finally get to working on those. Okay. Um. This is going to be a lot of under the sea fabric. This is a uh, Naried Opal 16 count Ada. It's 
it's really pretty blue. There's not really too much modeling to it, but really pretty color. Really nice, deep color. A lot of the fabrics that I personally dye tend to be more, like deeper colors. Like that. Okay. And then, do I have, I think that might be looking in this one. I think this is the last of the, okay, so this is not under the sea fabric. I'll get back to under sea fabric here in a second. This is color in cotton. What color does it say this is? Limited edition, so does not have a color. This is 28 count cashel linen. I got this really big piece. It's so pretty. It's like a, it's an orange, but it's like a peachy pink orange. It's got like these nice yellows. I don't know. If, you know, it's so hard to get the true colors of a video, but I'm planning on stitching Rosamund on it. I think the posts of the bed would pop on that really well. And it's like a deep enough orange to where like the light colors and stuff won't get lost. I think they'll look nice. We'll see how that works out. This is a, this was gifted to me. It's a Wichelt Perman 28 count linen color thyme. And it's just this really nice mottled green fabric. You see the tag? It's really pretty. Um, it's like a nice neutral. I was planning on seeing if I could stitch this. I haven't this I haven't finalized this decision, but this is Echo Lake by Nora Corbett. I feel like those purples and greens would pop on that. Now we'll get back to undersea fabrics. I bought a mermaid box from Leslie. Oh wait, before that, real quick. This is another color in cotton. I also got to go to their uh, brick and mortar store. Um, my company was having like their family day at Six Flags, so we got to go there since it was nearby. My husband was patient enough to sh show up early to the shop and go there before we went into the theme park. Okay, um, so this is 32 count Belfast, um, color Witching Hour. It's a nice deep purple. It's got like some darker tones to it. Not like a drastic amount of modeling, but it's a nice color. And I was thinking of doing this for one of my nieces. It's uh, Mirabilia's Opalescent. Well, I guess, so it says it's from the Petite Mermaids Collection by Nora Corbett, so maybe this is before she changed the packaging. This is Ophelia's Pearl. Yeah, Nora Corbett design. So one of her smaller designs. I think it'll look really good on that. So, I might start that over the summer. Um, and then the rest of these are under the sea fabrics. Um, this one is... Nephilim, 16 count opalescent. All these are 16 count opalescent. See the name there? This is by Leslie at Under the Sea Fabrics. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. Look at the modeling. That looks like a galaxy deep ocean fabric. So pretty. And mermaids are supposed to be going on all these. Um, You know, there's got to be one more that's not in here. I might go looking for it here in a second. Okay, this is M. Freddy. Um, again, 16 count opalescent. Also very beautiful. Look at that. I love the blues and the purples. Um, okay, let me see if I can find it here. Oh, here it is. This is the last piece I have. Oh, I think I did already show this, didn't I? Yes, I did. That's that nice blue color. Okay, so I did. I have shown everything. There's another, like, opalescent pink fabric. I might just insert a picture that I stitched, um, Sea Hag. 
And that was also under the sea. I stitched this on though. It came with, I should say, let me see. Model is stitched on Ophelia 28 count Joblin from Under the Sea Fabrics. So I stitched mine on 16 count Ada. Oh, bless it. But this is Ophelia, that color fabric there. It's very pretty. Okay, so that is all the fabric that I bought that was specifically hand dyed fabric. I think I already showed this in a past video. I'm planning on stitching one of the Nora Corbett letters on this. This is a linen, but it's for like upholstery fabric. It's a Gardener's Bay Flora Sea Glass. Okay. And I've measured it out to be close to 28 count, but I'm planning on stitching a Mirabilia, or not Mirabilia, Nora Corbett letter, fairy letters on here. It's got a nice like printed pattern to it. The other side doesn't have, yeah, it's a printed fabric. The other side's not. So I'll show you that real quick. Okay, so now we're gonna get to all the stuff I've dyed. And I'll try to remember how I did a lot of this. Um, I can link a bunch of videos in the description, but what I think I'm gonna do is I'm going to at some floss tubers that I know have really good videos on dyeing fabrics that I myself have modeled some of these or use some of the techniques that they should. Um, I will say Yanni Stitcher is a really good uh, person to go check out. Um, I don't think she's the one that I got the jar dyeing from. Uh, this is a piece, I guess this is linen. It might be a cash out linen. I'm not sure. I think it's one of those that I just scrapped. Um, I dyed this. There is some slight modeling on it, but it, most of it is that teal blue, greeny blue color. I'm planning on stitching Mary Billy's Persephone on there. And I'm actually going to convert her skin tones to Lord Olympus Persephone. Um, and I guess I'll convert her hair too, but I haven't decided the colors yet. I, I've been getting a bunch of different pink threads though to figure that out. So I have this fabric and it's a pretty good piece. And she, I mean, she's a pretty gr big girl, so I'm gonna need it. should be a lot less zipping now. I have a whole bin right here. We'll see how this goes. Okay, this is a 14 count Ada. It's a small piece. This was definitely jar dyed. So I don't have a jar here to show you. But what I typically do is I will heat up some water really, really, really hot, and I'll, in a smaller jar, I'll go ahead and premix some dye up if I'm using powder dyes. If not, um, if I'm using the, the RIT liquid dyes, I won't bother with it. Um, what I'll do is I'll put some salt at the bottom of the jar. I'll wet my fabric in the top water under the sink. I will... Put a little bit of hot water in the jar, the bigger jar that I'm going to put my fabric in. Try to get a jar that's going to be big enough to fit all your fabric. So you might want to check that first before you use it. And also let the jar be big enough that you can pull it back out after you shove it in there. Um, but yeah, so I'll put some salt at the bottom of the jar. I'll put a little bit of hot water to help dissolve the salt. Then I will shove the fabric in there. Um, well, you can do this one of two ways. I've done it both ways. So before you shove the fabric in, uh, you can put whatever dye you're using in there. Um, again, in a smaller jar, if I'm using a powder dye, I'll try to dissolve the powder first as much as possible in some really hot water. And then I'll pour it into the jar with a little bit of water and salt. I'll stir that all up so it's well mixed. Then I will put the fabric in and then I will fill the rest of the jar up with water to be just over the fabric so that the entire fabric should be underneath the water in the jar. 
Um, then I like to use like a popsicle stick and I'll like stir up the water inside. And what you can do with that is it'll give you gradients and it can do things like that where the parts of the fabric that are all bunched up aren't going to get as much color. They're not going to be exposed to the dye as much. Um, and the parts that are on the outer edges are going to get more of the dye and you can get some color gradation. If you want it to be more consistent, right? If you want it like the pink fabric that I showed, that's pretty, and even the one that I just showed for Persephone, that's like pretty solid color all the way across. Um, I have done a couple of techniques to get it to be a solid color. I have stopped up my sink and let the entire fabric just sit as flat as possible at the bottom of the sink with the dye. Um, similar process to what I just described in the jar. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, or I'll make sure that I'm using a really big jar and like, you know, stir the fabric up um, and try not to crumple it up as much so that the dye, you know, that, um, gets to the fabric more evenly across. But this one, I'm pretty sure I just did it with some blue denim red dye. I got some really nice effects. And then we'll start going through these a little bit quicker. This is a linen. If I had to guess, I would say 28 count. That's typically what I end up doing. It's a really nice prim, right? You could use this for a sampler. It's like a nice um, beigey color. And you can see there's some modeling in it, and it, but it's pretty consistent throughout. So I think um, I might have done that method. Um, if you do it the opposite way, where you put the fabric in first and then you put the dye on top, um, if you don't mix it up right, you'll get more of a gradient in the color. I have done it before where, like I think I've showed, so a lot of the the capture photos that I show for my videos are pieces of fabric that I've dyed or photos that I've taken myself. There is one of them, and I'll try to insert the photo here maybe, of like, and it might be in this pile somewhere, but I'm not sure if I've already used it to be honest. It kind of goes from a gradient of like blue to purples, and the way that I did that is I didn't really stir it up too much, but so I filled up the jar halfway with hot water that had been mixed with blue dye, then I put my fabric in, and then I topped it off with purple dye. And then it kind of formed that gradient in the fabric. Um, I didn't have a lot of control over like where that gradient lined up, but I thought it turned out pretty nice. Um, so, you know, you can just try to experiment with a bunch of stuff. I have this one. This is really bright. I think I, um, one of my friends dyed this with goldenrod. A lot of my friends dyed their fabrics. I told them they could keep them if they wanted to, because we were just having like a fun artsy night. Um, but a lot of them, not all of my friends cross-stitched, so they didn't know, they weren't sure what they would do with it. Um, some of them tried some tie-dye methods that would turn out pretty cool. I'll see if some of those are in here. Um, but this was goldenrod, I believe. Red dye. And then we have this really nice, this is uh, an Ada, dyed really nice. Um, I, I've heard a lot of different things about different types of fabric taping the dye differently. That is true, but I can't say that there's a across the board rule about it. I think sometimes it depends on the dyes that you're using, right? And even if you look at the red dye that's available at the store, sometimes you'll see that they say like for it's meant to dye natural fibers like cotton and stuff like that, and some of them is meant for synthetic fibers like polyester. So depending on the dye that you get, it might also change the way that your fabric actually takes it and holds on to it. But this is. I think this was like, I guess it was either black or dark gray, maybe charcoal. But this took the dye really nicely. And this is like a linen. Again, probably 28 count. Well, I don't know if it's a linen. You know, the, the composition. cross Stitch the Globe just did a really good video about um, different types of linen, the names for them based on the compositions. A lot of these fabrics, I thrift them, so I wouldn't be able to tell you exactly what they are. This is another pretty... Ada, um, again, it was that cotton, We're using red dye, I think I just used a red on this. You got some really nice modeling here. I'm gonna start going through these a little quicker because there's a huge stack, so much fabric. Okay, this is another piece, smaller. Some of these have been zigzagged, some of them have not. Ooh, this is really nice. This is a 
Okay, so this piece was Ada. This piece is Hard Anger, 22 count Hard Anger. But they took the fabric, or sorry, they took the dye similarly. Okay, um, I have this piece. I think this one was actually supposed to be a brown, but it came out like pinky. This is also 22 count Hard Anger. What does this say? This is just a 25 count even weave. Really pretty grays. This is going to be interesting to pull away after I'm done. Okay. I have some more 22 count heart anger. This was dyed with brown. I have like some speckling here. Here is another. Okay, so this one looks like it's an 18 count Ada. This has some really nice, I mean, almost army tones. You know, so you got your, your green, your beige, your kind of muddy yellows, earthy tones. This is 22 count Hardinger. Got some really nice modeling. This is like a, it's showing really blue in the screen. But there's like some greeniness to it. More like a blue green. This is a pretty nice green fabric. This is 22 count Hardinger. I'll open it up. This dyed, uh, it's pretty even. You know, there's some slight modeling to it, but it's not as modeled as, like, this one, right? I feel like this maybe got crumpled more. Um, you know, I think some of these, what we actually did was, like, low immersion dyeing. Yanni Stitcher has a lot of them in her video, where she does, she uses tins, and she crumples it up in a tin. This was probably jar dyed, and this was probably crumpled in that tin. So it's, like, low water immersion versus completely immersed. There's another nice brown. This one. I'm wondering if I let this just fade into a gradient because there's less of that modeling on this side, but it also has like a different tone to the color of the brown than on this side. Oh, this one is wild. It's probably 28 count. This is like a good <laughs> Halloween y fabric. I don't really stitch a lot of Halloween, so. Fall fabric. I have to see what I use that for. Oh, that's a really big piece. I'll have to see. Okay. Oh, wow. That looks so blue. <laughs> it's not as bright of a blue. Um, there is a more mutedness to the colors. There's some spots of green. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, if I put a white balance there. Can you see, like, there's spots of green here? Okay, this is like, I guess it's supposed to be a bread cover, an Ada bread cover, because it's already got like, you know, it's finishing to it. And it's a nice like lavender, I think this was lavender purple that I, this was dyed with. Um, oh, this is interesting. So you, this has got to be like some kind of fabric blend. It's an Ada, but look at how the dye took to it. It looks so strange. Like, there's parts of it, and I use, I think all the dyes that I use are not for synthetic fibers, so it seems like there's synthetic fiber in this, because it looks, you see, like, the white patches there, like, didn't take the dye, like the other fibers did. This piece, this is a nice bright red, it's not quite scarlet, it's more like a pinky. Oh, I know there's a really nice, like, blood red Taylor Swift lip color coming up soon. Um, this is an Ada. This is 22 Count Hardinger. Nice, pretty blue. This is another bread cover. Oh, I really like this one. I think my friend let me keep this. I hope she let me keep this. This looks like a sunset. This is, like, begging for, like, a nice beachy or fairy, even. Like, nice, bright flower tones. This is another one of those. Okay, this is an Ada, right? Those bright covers are Ada. Um, this is also an Ada. This is 14 count. This is 18. It looks like 18 count. Same, very similar to the, the other one, but the other one looked like a deeper blue. 
in the camera, right? This one is like more muted, um, and it, but it does still have those patches of like greenish yellow, yellow green throughout the middle here and on this side, not so much on this side. Um, there is this piece. And I'm trying to remember, this is probably a mixture of colors, right? This looks like, you know, this looks like a reddish color, but I'm telling you, there's a, it's like chocolate brown or something that I have that tends to red for whatever reason. And you'll get different effects from it because there was a fabric that I showed a while back, right here, this one. Like I dyed, I'm pretty sure this is the same dye. And either I use hotter water or I left it sit overnight longer or just the type of fabric like you get it's very unpredictable and I will tell you the first time I ordered this is why I like to I prefer now to buy fabric when if I'm in the store unless it's just like you know a mermaid box and I was not disappointed at all by the fabrics that I got in the under the seed fabrics box but if I have expectations based off the pictures that I'm seeing online I will be honest I did not respect the unpredictability of the dyeing process when I first ordered fabric and I did I was in my feelings for a little bit there, but it's just something you got to keep in mind. This is like peacock colors, right? It's also, both of these are Ada's. There's some greens and purples, blues. There's some lighter blues. Um, I'm pretty sure I use powder dyes here because I don't think I have a liquid purple unless it's, I have a lavender purple, but I don't have like, no, I think I might've recently bought an eggplant purple, but I don't know if I've actually tried it out yet. So I know a lot of the colors that I've gotten, like as far as liquid dye, are very basic. Like the basic, you know, rainbow colors. I haven't dived into some of the other, you know, mixing too many colors here. And there's this orange piece of scrap Ada. This is a hard anchor fabric, also orange. Very orange, that Halloween orange. This is another scrap piece. I think, no, I remember this. So this is an experiment one of my friends did. They actually folded this up to kind of resemble an origami crane and this is the kind of fabric lines they got isn't that cool looks like a, like kind of like a star right this is again this must have been another piece of that fabric that has like a mixed but it's not it, it can't it's not the exact same count though but it almost seems like part of the fabric took to the dyes more than the other fibers. I don't know. It just looks, maybe it just looks like that. I'm not sure. But it has a similar effect to that one that I showed you before. This one. It's not as drastic, but I don't know if you can tell. It's really dark. I might have, I know I have some black red dyes. This was definitely um, brown. This is not the chocolate brown, because I said that chocolate brown dye that I've used in the past like leans towards red or pink sometimes. For whatever reason this one is interesting i think i can't remember what actually happened here but um or they might have set down a napkin they like wiped off some dye from their hands and then put accidentally put it on top of this fabric so this has got an interesting spot here i don't know why but i'm thinking of like black spot from pirates of the caribbean I have more fabric than I know what to do with it. So by all means, if you see something that you'd be interested in or tag this video, um, then I might give away some of these. Obviously not the ones that I've already, you know, thumbed for projects, but a lot of these, I mean, I have more fabric than, well, I'm obviously not gonna use this anytime soon. So I might do a giveaway when we get to 100 subscribers. I'm getting close. I thought I wasn't even at 60 the other video I recorded, but I'm actually already at I think I checked today, 70 subscribers. That's more than I thought I would have by this point. Um, so thank you, thank you for watching. Um, okay, here we go. I love the blue and purple fabrics because I love. I want so much to stitch so many mermaids, you know, and they look like perfect under the sea fabrics. Like, can you think about that? You know, the closer, like this being the top, she's like going up, closer to the sun. That one was probably pan dyed, not jar dyed, because it has different colors in it. Typically the ones, unless it's like a gradient, the ones that like actually have colors over the place, um, I dyed in like a pan, a tin pan. 
And uh, like I said, Yanni Stitcher has a lot of good tutorials. I'll link her below. Um, just look up, go to her channel and search for tutorials. It's a nice scrap of brown fabric. I've got this scrap of blue. This is Hardinger, I think. Yeah, this is also Hardinger fabric, 22 count Hardinger. This is so pretty, but I have not decided what I want to do with it. Um, I think this is, this feels like a linen. Not an even weave, like it actually feels like it's made out of flax. Um, this is like a sunset. I guess I could turn it sideways. But look at that. Look at those gradients. I actually thought about stitching the ellipse fairy on this originally, like putting the bright yellow wings on the side and like the grays down here. But I ended up using like a brown fabric that I really liked. I'll, I might insert a picture of that because that was also a fabric that I hand dyed in here. I'm trying to remember to do that. Um, we're not done. There's still more to go. Let's see. I was gonna do a walkthrough of all the fabrics that I have because I kind of need to humble myself. Like I need to check myself. You know when you start doing stash dives and you're like, I don't ever need fabric again. That's I'm getting to that point now. Okay, so this is a 14 count Ada, but I might have to split it up because this video is already 36 minutes, and I'm telling you, I'm not through with a sack. And this is the ones that I've dyed or with the help of my friends, or my sister. Okay, look at this. This is like, again, this, you got the beiges and the greens. This is like very military-esque fabric to me. It's very soft. Uh, and we're still going. Oh, this is, I think this is, yep, this looks like one of the gradient ones. So this one was not purple and blue, like the one I was telling you about. It's green and purple. What did I think I was gonna do on this? This looks like a this looks like a straight up maleficent fabric, like somebody did a maleficent conversion to one of the Bella Filipinas. Doesn't this look like <laughs> you could have stitched like the green magic coming up? That that is a straight up maleficent right there. So pretty, and this is an even weave. I don't know. It feels like it could be linen. Like it feels good. like it could be foxy like that. It's very similar to like the consistency of this one. Okay, still going, guys. Um, here's a green fabric. This is an Ada. It's got some very nice, and look, you can so I think this was jar dyed too, because you can see how the colors are like darker here. So I think it's one of the situations where I put the dye in first, then I shove the fabric in, and then I topped it off with water, and then I used like a, what did I say? I used a popsicle stick to like stir it up to try to get the dye, you know, to stir in the water, but not completely evenly, and the fabric's already crumbled up, so. The, the way that the dye is gonna hit it so it actually so there's not as many white patches on this because I tried to start it up really well and if I want deeper colors like this I leave it overnight I just set the jars either in a corner of my kitchen or put them on a shelf somewhere and I just leave them to uh, soak up that dye overnight this one I think I, tr I put too much fabric in the jar I think that's what this is because this is not evenly dyed at all I think this is was yeah you can tell it's a really big piece this is and the piece of ada really big piece that i jar dyed and look at how i mean to try to get this into the jar i tried to use a big pretty big jar but you can tell like the dye only hit certain parts of the fabric so i feel like if i cut this up into different pieces like you definitely look like this looks like pretty consistent right a bunch of modeling all over the fabric and then this side bigger areas of modeling you can tell like this is where it was really crumpled up and the dye couldn't get access to it and then here, barely any. So it's very muted. It's almost like four sides of this. But it's, it is pretty. I just tried to do too much fabric at once. Okay, here is, and I've mentioned this in the other video too, if anybody's interested in the fabric that I'm currently stitching my Mirabilia on, I still have plenty of it. This is, this is a huge table linen. Look, I dyed this whole thing. I ice dyed this entire piece of fabric. There's so much. There's, there's so much fabric. I could probably, I don't know, give away 10 pieces, decent pieces, like mirabilia, bigger mirabilia size pieces to people and still have plenty left over. Like there's, look, this is a piece in and of its own that you could stitch nightingale on separate that I cut off and then I half this to get the piece that I'm currently working on nightingale 
So technically I already have a piece cut. I just need to, I mean, that edge isn't short searched. You can tell it's a table item, like, like this is the edge of it. But I dyed this with red and black powder writ dye, and then, so I didn't even like, you know, people like put it in a grate to like help the dye bleed through. Nope. I just wet the fabric, put it in a, one of those big um, oven trays, aluminum trays, rectangular trays, and crumpled up the fabric really good, and put as much ice as I could on top of it, and then just sprinkled a small package of black powder dye and red powder red dye, and just let it sit overnight. And then by the time the morning came, like, I was surprised. I probably should have left it in the sink, because it almost did overflow the pan. Like, that's just how much fabric and, like, water, ice, everything had just condensed into it. So I ended up with, like, there are a few, like, lighter patches, but most of it is pretty immersed in those colors. I was joking. My mom really likes, like, you know, that black and red type. I think she has, like, a lot of her wardrobe was like this. Um, so I was like, this is like that, you know, 90s gothic um, punk rock you know, there's like a certain aesthetic to this. And I was like, I could name this like Vampire Kisses or something. It seems very dark fantasy to me. This one is like, this was definitely a pan dyed. Like there's so many colors in this. Um, I'm wondering, there's gotta be, so one of the videos that Yanni does is dyeing with tissue paper. And I have to have one of those somewhere because I did that with my sister at one point. I don't believe this is one of them because there's just too many different colors here. I think this is what we had a little bit left of a bunch of different dyes and she just put it all, you know, crumpled it up into a pan and just went to town. She's a lot more uh, adventurous with the colors that she uses when we do stuff like this. This might have been the fabric that I was talking about. I'm not sure. I'd have to look. But you see, so I used that technique. So it got a gradient of like the blues to the purples. And I think I actually put the blue in first, and then I topped it off with the purple. And you see how, like, there's less of it? But it's got, like, a really nice gradient to that color. This looks like, yeah, this looks like this one I've been one of the tissue paper experiments. Um, got a bunch of color some places, not as much in other places. I don't know if that's just because we didn't use enough tissue paper, or we crumpled up the fabric too much, or didn't give it enough space to have, like, more... But I mean, it's still a pretty interesting effect. This is another one of those. Yeah, I think this is the you know, same situation. We just used a bunch of whatever leftover dye we had at the end of the that dyeing session. Oh, it's so pretty. This is a 22 count. And if you don't, like, I know a lot of people are stitching on the really small counts, like 40 count. Um, primitive hair calls for a lot of 40 count. Um, I think... Does cottage garden threads also count for their stuff to be on a 40 count fabric? You I, you can use 22 count hard anchor too, like if it's easier on your eyes. Um, there could be slippage of stitches just because of the way that the layout is for the threads for hard anchor. Um, but you can change the way that you stitch to help account for that so you don't, won't lose your stitches behind the threads. But. So pretty. Look at that. I think I must have used two different types of blues because this looks like like a denim blue, and this looks like uh, aquamarine or something. Got another scrap of orange. Okay, I gotta take a... We're at 43 minutes already! Okay, this is another bigger piece. Oh my gosh. This is so big. This is like a 18? 16, 18 count Ada? Look at this, so pretty. It's like light blues and purples. Really big piece. There's a piece that I have that is huge, that like I tried to dye in two jars at the same time. It's not this piece, because you can actually have like a, it looks like it has an actually good consistent color all the way across. I might have actually pan dyed this one, because I don't think I have a jar big enough to fit this. Ooh, okay, so this is where I was talking about. I think I used scarlet red for this. And the scarlet red will actually give you like a deeper tomato-y red, I guess. Less pinky. Because I'm, I think, the other red, yeah, see like these are like pinkier. This is more like orangey, tomato, red. So if you just do red, red dye, you're gonna get that pinky red. And if you want something more like, I don't know, blood red, vampire red, 
I would go with Scarlet Red Red Dye. Um, we're still going. Honestly, I'm going to be honest. I probably won't part with this one. So if you're looking at this one. I'm sorry to say, unless there's a smaller piece. Just because this is one of the only ones that I have in this color. Just a heads up. Um, this is a 14 count Ada. Really pretty. Variation. This looks like I just used one type of dye. Uh, I might have mixed. No, I don't really mix my dyes. This might have just been a different blue. Looks like it's like a darker purple blue. Maybe Delft blue versus the denim. I can't remember. There's a couple different blues that I have. There's an orange. You can really see the... The very... Well, I guess. I don't know. The variegation looks a little bit better in the screen than it does in person. This is actually a deeper orange. It's not as light on there. This is a really light, light lavender purple. And you can see these, like, I have... I found a lot of these bread covers. You can tell, like, the way that they're finished on the edges. Um, they're Ada fabric. I have another one here that I did with those dyed in greens. It has some yellow spots to it. Here's one. Looks like, again, just use red. Turned out pinky-ish. Probably didn't leave it in the hot water, or maybe the water wasn't as hot. Or it could just be the fabric again. It's just one of those things. Okay, so here's the one where I tried to dye it in two different jars, and I underestimated the size of the fabric and how much dye I would need. But it did, I mean, there's some interesting effects on the edges, right? This is the edge of the fabric. This is a 22 comp hard anger. There's some really nice, it almost looks like watercolor, you know? Like a watercolor immersion effect. This piece of fabric is huge. I, I'm not going to be able to open it up all the way and show you. But we got some nice purples on some sides, some greens on the other. And again, look like, you see like the way that it turned out in different areas it was different. Like this barely, I mean, you can see there's definitely, this looks like a watercolor background. Like this is, you wouldn't need to do anything else. Like if you wanted to have like a, you know, nice color modeling on your fabric, but you don't want like deeper colors to take away from the design that you're working on. But this is really big piece. 22 count heart anger. Very nice. I like the effects. Um, okay, a lot of these are just some little scraps. Again, like this looks like we just- oh, this might have been one of the tissue paper ones that we tried out. It's got that same, like, starkness to the designs on it. This, this is definitely one of the tissue paper ones we tried. I don't know, we tried, like, one of the lighter colored tissue paper, and I guess it didn't have a lot of dye transfer to it. This looks like it was jar dyed. It's really soft. An Ada. Really nice bright yellow. Um, and I'm pretty sure the only yellow that I have is that. Well, I think I might have bought a dandelion yellow recently, but this looks like it was goldenrod. Here's, this is, definitely looks like it was the chocolate brown. It doesn't tend as pinky-ish as some of the other things that I've dyed, but you can kind of tell there's like a certain tone to it. It's not like a forest woods brown. This is another one. I, I can bet you this was also the tissue paper. Again, we used some lighter ones. Probably didn't use enough tissue paper. The transfer wasn't really there, but there is some interesting effects on the back of this, so I could still use it like this without having to over dye it. But I don't know. I don't typically go for like yellow yellowed effects. I don't know if I would use this. Okay, let's see. I have some... Okay, I have a couple of finishes I can show you on other fabric that I've dyed. But before I do... Okay, we're almost done. And then I'm gonna have to separate this to a different video because it will take forever to upload. Okay. <laughs> the pile is just growing closer and closer to the camera. I'm wondering, should I... Okay, let me take this off. <laughs> This huge stack of fabric. I wonder if I weighed this. How many pounds? Oh my gosh. Okay. Do I have enough fabric? Yes. Scream in the comments. Yes. This is a really nice, like, I don't, like a reddish orange color, but it leans more towards orange. It's not showing up. If I put the white. That's not going to do anything. It's like a deeper color than that. Looks lighter on the screen. Okay, this is really pretty. I don't know. This looks like 
Um, if you like autumn colors, this looks like the perfect autumn fabric. You got your yellows, your oranges, your reds. Um, there's slight green tones in it. They're really pretty. This had to be pan dyed. I'm pretty sure my sister did this one. It's beautiful. And this is an Ada, yes. Both of these are Ada's. This is 14 count. This looks like it's maybe 16, 18 count. This is very pretty. This is a Hardinger fabric. It looks like, again, more of that chocolate brown. You see, it tends towards... I don't know if you can see it, but it, it, it's not like brown. Like, it, there's a reddish tone to it. Like, almost like red velvet, but, but it's not obviously. I mean, red velvet has a more reddish hue to it, but... It's like a chocolate covered cherry? I don't know. I don't know. This is just black. Yeah. This is probably jar dyed. A smaller jar. Some really nice effects. This is uh, also... Nope. Nope, this is even weave. Looks like it might be Joblin. Yeah, it might be Joblin. Because there's not as much spacing in it. Which I know the weave gets a little tighter when you dye it sometimes, but this looks like Joblin. This is Ada. This, again, reminds me of like military colors. It's got the green here, the really dark, muddy browns here, and I don't know if they added black here, and it just mixed it with the brown. Some really nice modeling. Okay, um, that is the end of the stack for the stuff that I have for self-dyed. Okay, here are some finishes that I've done. Um, I'm meaning to turn this into, well, I guess both these. I was going to toy with turning them into project bags. This is Basket Full of Love. It's a cottage garden sampling um, chart. And I, it's this really nice dyed Hardinger. Yep, that's Hardinger. It turned out so pretty. There's like white stitches up here that aren't showing up all that great, but the bunny, because I guess it's outlined, turned out really good. And everything else showed up pretty good. It's just, you know, some of the white buds on the flowers here. And the white, there's some white spiral stitching like on the bottom. Didn't show up as well, but I'm happy with it. The stuff that's standing out is standing out for me. Now this is one that I dyed a while back. I uh, test stitched a full coverage chart. Um, I will link below where you can find this. Um, she is charting... Uh, different artists work to make into full coverage designs. Um, she has a lot of beautiful patterns on there, um, a good array, and she's picking different artists to highlight and uh, work with, partner up with. Um, this one's really pretty. I think it's called Rose Witch on her site. Uh, I'm blanking on the name, but I'll have to uh, link her below. So this was like a brown fabric that I dyed. This is all, this is a even weave, uh, 28 count. It's, you know, actually, I think when I measured it, this is actually 32. I'm not sure whether it's cash all or, well, again, go watch Cross the Globe. They just went through all the naming, the different counts, depending on the counts and the type of fibers, whether it's cotton or flax or all that jazz. Okay. If you have made it to the end of the video, I have something special. Um, I can insert a photo if it'll be easier to see. I'm not sure how this is going to show up the way that I currently have my setup, but we will do our best. These are fabrics that I dyed and I have finishes on them and they're framed. So let's see how good we can get. Maybe I should have put a disclaimer. Uh, she is artistically exposed. <laughs> This is the Dark Queen of the Earth by Autumn Lane Stitchery. Gorgeous. I dyed this brown fabric. I think I only used one type of brown. And it, was, it wasn't it was the chocolate brown because it doesn't have the red tones to it. Or the pinky tones to it. But she has... I made some personalizations. She's got some butterflies that I found at Joann's. I heard they're... Well, I guess they're not closing down. They have declared bankruptcy. I put some sparkle in the center of the orbs. Let me move her down. 
can see some beads and some sparkle in her dress. Again, yeah, it's probably gonna be better. Oop, not the camera. If I actually insert a picture, because it's so big. These are beautiful big ladies. So, what do you think the next one is? Of course, the other version. This one doesn't have glass, so no glare. Yay. This one is the other version. Um, I stitched on the screen fabric. I think Erin recommended that if we were picking a different fabric than what they recommended, that to not go towards blue or greens because they might blend in with some of the greens that he had chosen for the design. Um, I think I aired just close enough. Like, I think some of these colors, like the vines don't really stand out, right? And I think there's maybe this green right here. I mean, you can see it just fine. So maybe it's not that big of an issue, but I feel like some of the greens, if they were right up against the fabric, like if they didn't have stitching around it, they might get lost. But I think for the most part, everything shows up pretty well. I love this crown. Everybody in the cross stitch group really loved that. I actually designed it around the beads, but I did want like, you know, she's a dark queen, so I wanted to be thorny. Like the thorns and the vines. These beautiful flowers. They also have opalescent thread in the centers. She's got a oh, go this way. Another beautiful flower here. And I put some um oh, I kind of I guess enlarge the corners here to make it more of that Art Nouveau style. And I put, there's like some 3D flowers. You know, they're anchored in there, but I can still just shift them a little bit. And I added this flower here to her necklace. She has some, you can't really see them all that well, but she has like some sparkly tattoos kind of sort of on her arms nowhere else just her arms but yes i'm really happy with how she turned out i love these flowers they're so pretty and her petal lashes you're so creative all right then there's this last one also on fabric that i dyed this was in response like i said before the first fabric that i bought was for one of the sows for Autumn Lane's tree and I was not happy with the colors because the colors weren't as deep as I was expecting them to be when I wore the fabric. I don't know why that was. Again, the dyeing um, process is very unpredictable. Could have been for a number of things. It could have been the fact that they got swarmed with orders um, once the design got released and I'm sure Leslie was working her butt off to dye some of this stuff. So I don't know if it was a combination of maybe the type of the fabric that I requested with the type of the dye that she was using with maybe, you know, it didn't get a chance to sit in the dye as long. So the colors weren't as deep. I don't know, but I wasn't completely happy with it. I mean, obviously the design turned out beautifully no matter what. And the fabric was opalescent. So shiny, sparkly, can't complain. Um, but I dyed this instead because I wanted it on like deeper color. And I dyed this using tulip dyes, powder dyes, um, the aqua and what was the pink? Or maybe it's teal. I think it's teal. It's teal and the pink is... I'll have to look it up. But they're tulip powder dyes. You can find them at Walmart. That's where I got mine. But this is the Dark Queen of the Seas. I added some personalizations. She's got some beads added to her bracelet here. Um, I changed the crown up to be more reminiscent of like, I guess Ursula's crown maybe. She tried to take over for King Trident. And got the octopus half down here. Um, I added all these little under the sea, deep sea treasures. Got some seashells, some black pearls, some, you know, pearl lies beads, some gold. Um, this nice swirly seashell looking bead, this crystal star, crystal fishy. Um, what else do I have over here? I have a little star. I think that's Swarovski crystal right here. Um, and more, you know, like this is like a seashell y bead here. The trident has um, 
metallic thread all the way down the length, but it also has these pearl beads. Um, that was part of the pattern. Um, I also did personalization here. I changed the fishies. There's a game that I used to play called um, Splash Reef Sanctuary. It's by Runway. Um, they you can go on Wikipedia and they have like a Wikipedia page for them, but they have really cute like cartoony depictions of different coral reef fish. And um, I tried to I based some of these fish off of some of the depictions they had in there. And some of them turned out better than others, but I really like how a lot of these turned out. Super pretty. Very sparkly. Very beautiful. Very puffy. Those are going away, but they haven't been delivered to their recipients as of yet. Okay, congrats. You made it to the end of this video. Um, I will commit. When we get 200 subscribers, I will give away a piece of hand-dyed fabric of those that you saw, excluding the red fabric, because I only have one piece of that, and I want to keep that one. Um, I think everything else I'd be willing to let go of, to be honest, just because I have so many different types of blue and purple and, you know, under-the-sea type dyed fabrics, and I still have plenty of dye, which I will show in a separate video because this one's over an hour long already. Um, so by all means, watch this video, look through it, if you see me like, stick around, or get some people to subscribe, and then I'll do a giveaway, and you can pick your very own piece of hand-dyed fabric from moi. Uh, do not make any claims about it being color fast, I highly doubt it is. I did try to rinse them out as much as possible, but I make no promises. Um, I will ship in the US. I have no idea what the cost of shipping internationally is, unfortunately, um, but I keep hearing over and over again it's super expensive. So I'm going to limit it to US only shipping. Um, sorry if that excludes some people. Um, I feel like if you still want to participate, I wouldn't mind having international participation, but I might end up giving you a gift card instead. I have not decided on an amount. I will announce that in the giveaway. Um, maybe you could do some research if you're interested in participating on something like that to a place you might be interested in getting a gift card to. And if they do, you know, digital gift cards. And if you find a store in your local area that does that, I would be more open doing that. And I will decide on amount when we get closer to the end. Okay. I hope you enjoyed watching this. I'm going to gear up to do the other video I promised, which was going through my lavender and lace charts uh, and the rest of my mirror daily charts. Depending on how long it is, I might switch it up into a few different videos. And then I'm going to do the rest of my fabric stash. Oh, you thought that, that was it? You, you thought that was all of it? No. No, I have tons more fabric that is either waiting to be dyed or is just sitting to the side. And I do not have time in this video to show you that. And I don't know if I can fit it in a video of itself. I can almost imagine it being a three-part video, just how long it took to do this one. But we will see. Thanks for watching. Um, I hope you are getting time to stitch and enjoy your crafting hobbies. I hope things are looking up. And I do hope that if you have been having some hard days, that things start easing up and getting better for you. I know all this week is very rainy for me. You know, it didn't make, put me in a good mental headspace, but I'm looking forward to it. They're forecasting that the weekend's gonna be nice and sunny. So I am just ready for things to warm up, for it to be summer. I'm very much a summer person. Um, so hopefully you're looking things, you're looking forward to things that are, you know, keeping you motivated to continue with your day and have things to look forward to. Um, until I see you again.